Hey everybody, and welcome to a, a rather unusual topic of probability. Uh, we're going to be talking about expected value today, and we're going to be talking about expected value in a very restricted context. Uh, the expected value of the amount to be gained or the amount to be lost. And here's the premise. We engage in an activity whose outcomes are either amounts gained or amounts lost. And just so that there's no misgiving about anything, a loss is the same as a gain of negative value. So if I play a game and I lose $2, or rather, if I play a game and my gain is negative $2, that's the same as me losing $2. Now let's look at a, a simple example. Here's a pretty simple game. Uh, it's simple, but we can use this as an example now. And in about 10 more minutes, we'll come back back to this example to illustrate the concept of expected value. Here's the example. We buy a lottery ticket. We pay one dollar for the ticket. If we win, we get a hundred dollars. Otherwise, we receive nothing. There are only two outcomes here. We win or we don't win. Let's look at each one. We win. We win. We're going to receive a hundred dollars. What's our gain? Well, we won $100, right? And that's the amount won. But up front, we had to make this initial investment of $1. We had to buy the ticket. If we win, our gain is $99. Now, there's only one other outcome. In this sort of activity, uh, either we win or we don't win. So let's look at the other outcome, case two. Here's the other outcome. We don't win. How much do we receive in that case? Absolutely nothing. We get nothing. 
What about our gain? We received zero dollars, or we won. We won zero dollars. The amount that we won and uh, Even though we didn't win anything, we still had to pay $1 to play, right? Okay. Negative $1, the amount that we paid to play. In this case, our gain is negative one dollar. And that's the same as saying. We lose one dollar, or we have a loss of one dollar. Now that's a pretty simple game. But it's going to be useful when we look at this concept of expected value. Now let's look at another game. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, not a lot more complicated, but it has uh, a lot more outcomes. And we'll use this next example to illustrate expected value also. Here's the game. We pay $1 to play this game. And in this game, we draw a single card from a deck of 52 playing cards. If we draw 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, then we win an amount in dollars that's equal to the numerical value on the card. For example, if the card we pick is a 2, we win $2. If the card we pick is a 5, we win $5. If the card we pick is an 8, we win $8, and so forth and so on. If we draw a face card, a jack, queen, or king, we have to pay $10. If we draw an ace, we have to pay 15. Let's look at uh, the gains and losses that we can encounter playing this game. Let's look at a few cases in this example. Suppose we draw a two. In that case, we win $2. And our gain will be $2, the amount that we won, minus $1, the amount that we paid to play the game. So 
our gain will be one dollar. Let's look at another case. Suppose we draw six. In that case, we win six dollars. What is our gain going to be? It's going to be the amount that we won, six dollars, minus the amount that we had to pay to play the game, The amount that we want minus the amount that we paid to play, our gain is five dollars. Let's look at another case. We draw a king. That's a face card. How much do we win if we draw a face card? Ten dollars. We win ten dollars. What's our gain? Going? Whoops. How much do we win if we get a face card? Uh-uh, we don't win. If we draw a face card, we have to pay $10, don't we? If we draw a king, we pay So what's our gain going to be? It's going to be the amount that we won, which is negative ten dollars. We had to pay ten dollars minus the amount that we paid to play, one dollar. So our gain will be negative eleven dollars. The amount one, let's see, should I say it that way? Uh, what did we say in our notes? So the amount that we won, yeah, we paid ten dollars, so we won a negative ten dollars. And the amount that we paid to play, well, let's see. Okay. Minus ten dollars, the amount that we paid. we lost minus the amount we had to pay to play the game. Our gain here negative eleven dollars.
our gain is negative $11, or we can say it's a loss of $11. And let's look at one more case. Okay, one more case here. Suppose we draw an ace. We have to pay how much? $15. And what about our gain? Well, we had to pay $15 because we drew an ace. $15, the amount paid because we drew an ace, minus $1, and that's the amount that we paid to play the game. So our gain is going to be a negative $16. And if our gain is negative $16, that means that we have a loss. Our loss is $16. Okay. These are our introductory examples. We're studying the topic of expected value, but we haven't really talked about what expected value is, and that's what we're going to do next. Hey, everybody, we're going to go back to uh, our first example, the lottery ticket uh, example. Uh, a person buys a lottery ticket for a dollar, and if they win, they get a hundred dollars. Now, if we buy a lottery ticket, uh, how great do you think our chances are of winning? Not very great, right? But now suppose somebody comes along, and every now and then you hear about something like this happening in the news. A person has never bought a lottery ticket before. And just on a whim, they buy one ticket. And they win. The odds against something like that happening are astronomical. But, you know, once every you know, 10 million times or whatever, it actually does happen. They've never bought a lottery ticket before in their entire life. And they buy one of these lottery tickets for a dollar, and they win, and it pays them a hundred dollars. They buy one ticket, their gain is a hundred, I'm sorry, the amount that they win is a hundred dollars. The amount that they pay for the ticket is one dollar. So their gain is the amount won, a hundred dollars, minus the amount paid. Their gain is $99. And this person <laughs> really likes the results. <laughs> they paid $1 for a lottery ticket. They just won $100. Hey, this is easy. I think I'll do it again. And you know what? The very next lottery, they do that. They buy one ticket. Now, what do you think their chances are of not very good. And this time reality sets in, they don't win. So in the second drawing, the amount won is zero. The amount that they paid was one dollar. So their gain for the second drawing was zero minus one dollar, which equals negative one dollar. 
So in the second drawing, their gain is negative one dollar. Overall, though, over two drawings, they're still ahead. Their overall gain over the first two drawings is now $98. After the first drawing, it was $99. But their gain for the second drawing was negative $1. So overall, after two drawings, they're still up. Their overall gain after two drawings is $98. So they're not discouraged. They buy a third lottery ticket. They pay $1 for the lottery ticket, and they don't win. So the amount that they win is zero. The amount they had to pay out was $1. Their gain for the third drawing is zero minus one, or negative $1. For the third drawing, their gain is negative one dollar. Over the course of the first three drawings, they're still up. Uh, their gain for the first drawing was ninety-nine dollars, and then they lost a dollar on each of the next two drawings, so they're still up ninety-seven dollars. So they continue to buy lottery tickets. They figure their luck's bound to change, and they're going to get lucky again and win another one. And you know what? On the 150th drawing, they get another winner. Uh, before that, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way to the 149th drawing, they didn't win. The amount that they won was zero. The amount that they had to pay out was one dollar. So their drawing of their gain for the 149th drawing was zero minus one, negative one dollar. And over the course of the first 149 drawings, oops, guess what? They're in the hole. Uh, overall, their overall gain after 149 drawings is negative $49. And then they buy that 150th lottery ticket, and they win. They win $100 minus the $100, uh, minus the $1 that they had to pay for the ticket. They won $100 minus the $1 they had to pay for the ticket. Their gain for the 150th drawing is $99. And overall, after 150 drawings, they're back up. Their overall gain after 150 drawings is $50. And the question is, if this person keeps buying lottery tickets and winning on average the same amount that they were winning here, uh, on average, how much should they expect to win each time they buy a lottery ticket? On average, if you take the overall gain and then divide that by the number of times that they play. On average, how much should they expect to win each time they buy a lottery ticket? Uh, that's the idea behind expected value. Over a long period of time, when they repeat this activity over and over and over and over again, on average, how much should they expect to gain each time they participate in this activity. That's the idea behind expected value. Uh, let's consider our example. The person bought 150 tickets. Uh, in other words, he engaged in this activity 150 times. Or in probability lingo, this experiment was repeated 150 times. His
his total winnings were $200. He won twice, $100 each time. His total winnings were $200. His total losses were $150. He bought 150 lottery tickets. Those were his losses. So the overall gain is winnings, $200, minus his losses, the amount paid to play. That leaves him with $50 overall gain. Now, let's look at this activity on average. Let's summarize the activities of uh, the guy who played the lottery. What about his average gain? We take his overall gain divided by the number of tickets that he bought. Uh, overall, he gained $50. He bought 150 tickets. So on average, he wins $1 for every three tickets he buys, or he wins on average 33 cents per ticket. So if he engages in this activity long time, the expected value of his winnings uh, any time he buys a ticket are 33 cents. Now, he's not going to win 33 cents. He's either going to lose a dollar or win a hundred. But overall, if this experiment or this game is repeated over and over and over, if he keeps buying lottery tickets over and over and over, on average, he's going to win. 33 cents per ticket. His gains are going to be 33 cents per ticket. And that would be the expected value of his winnings. And now I'm going to define expected value for gains formally. Here we are, the moment you've all been waiting for, uh, where I give the formal definition of expected value. Here we read, the expected value of an activity tells us, on average, how much we should expect to gain or lose each time that we engage in the activity. So in the card drawing experiment, no, let's see, in, in the lottery experiment, uh, the expected value would tell us how much we should expect to gain on average each time we buy a lottery ticket. Now let's look at the formula for expected value. We're going to use E for expected value. And this is an activity that has N possible outcome. In our lottery ticket uh, case, we had two possible outcomes. Either we win or we don't win. Those were the only two outcomes. Uh, in general, we may have more than two outcomes. We may have N outcomes. Whoops. Let me alter this. I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote that, but uh, I like that a lot better. This is the formula for expected value, P sub 1 times A1, P sub 2 times A2, dot, 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 P sub N times A sub N. E, we know what that is. That's the expected value of the activity. But what about the P's and what about the A's? P1. This is the probability of the first outcome occurring. P sub 1, first outcome occurs. P sub 2, this is the probability that the second outcome occurs, and so forth. And what about the A's? A sub 1, this is the amount gained if the first outcome occurs. And A sub 2, this is the amount gained if the second outcome occurs, and so forth and so on. 
So this is our expected value form. Let's put it to the test. We're going to consider the lottery ticket example. A person purchases one ticket per dollar. If they win, they get $100. Otherwise, they get nothing. Compute the expected value of the amount gained by a person if a person buys one lottery ticket. value is equal to probability 1 times A1 plus probability 2 times A2. Now why did I stop there? Why did I say that there are only two outcomes? There are only two outcomes, and I'll say O sub 1 is the first outcome. Uh, the ticket wins, let's see. I can say that a little bit better. The first outcome is that it's a winning ticket. O2, the only other outcome, not a winning ticket. So P1, probability. of getting a winning ticket and every time we've referred to this particular activity before we've done so without me saying what the probability of getting a winning ticket is and I'm still not going to say what the probability is what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the record of winnings and losses in our previous example to determine the probability of getting a winning ticket. I'm just going to do this experimentally. And assume that the experimental result is close to the actual result. P1, probability of purchasing a winning ticket In our example, the person bought 150 tickets, and only two of them were winners. So we'll say the number of winning tickets over number of tickets purchased. Two winning tickets out of 150 winning tickets. That's 1 over 75. And the probability of outcome two 
to not getting a winning ticket. This is 1 minus the probability tell you what. The probability P sub 2 this is the probability that O2 occurs not getting a winning ticket and this is 1 minus the probability that O1 does not occur. If we get a losing ticket that's the same as not getting a winning ticket. I'm sorry. Oh, crud. Probability of getting a losing ticket, that's the probability that O1 does not occur. And that's equal to 1 minus the probability that O1 does occur. Let me go over this again since I stumbled. Uh, experimentally, we found out that with 150 tickets purchased, only two of them were winners. So the probability of getting a winner was 1 over 75. P2, that's the probability of not getting a winning ticket. That's the probability of not O1 occurring. That's the probability that outcome 1 does not occur. And that's 1 minus the probability that O1 occurs. Or 1 minus 175th. So the probability that P2 occurs Seventy-four out of seventy-five. Let's summarize this. Uh, O1 is the outcome of getting a winning ticket. O2 is the outcome of not getting a winning ticket. Those are the only two things that can happen. So if O1 happens, O2 can't happen. If O2 happens, O1 can't happen. If O1 doesn't happen, O2 has to happen. If O2 doesn't happen, O1 has to happen. Those are the only two possibilities, and exactly one of them has to happen. P sub 1, that's the probability that O1 occurs. P sub 2, that's the probability that O2 occurs. In other words, P sub 1 is the probability that we have a winning ticket. And we computed that experimentally to be 1 over 75. P2 is the probability that we don't get a winning ticket. And the probability that we don't get a winning ticket is the same as the probability that O1 doesn't happen. O1 doesn't happen means we don't get a winning ticket. Then the probability that O1 doesn't happen is 1 minus the probability that O1 does happen, which is 1 minus 1 over 75. So that tells us the probability of O2 happening is 74 over 75. And A1 and A2, A1 is the amount gained if we do have a winning lottery ticket. And if we get a winning lottery ticket, we get $100. And our gain is that $100 minus the $1 that we paid for the lottery ticket.
So if total one happens and we get a winning ticket, the amount gained ninety nine dollars. If O two happens and we don't get a winning ticket, the amount gained is negative one dollar. We lost that one dollar buying a ticket that didn't win. Now let's compute the expected value based on experimental data of how much we should expect to win each time we buy a lottery ticket. The expected value is the probability that O1 occurs times the amount gained if O1 occurs plus the probability that O2 occurs times the probability, I'm sorry, times the amount gained if O2 occurs. And let's see, P1, that's 1 over 75 times K1, $99. Plus P2, the probability that the card doesn't win, and that's 74 over 75, times the amount gained, A2, if O2 occurs, and that's negative $1. Here we have $99 times 1. Plus a negative $1 times 74. Or negative $74 over 75. And that gives us $25 over 75. Or one dollar over three which turns out to be approximately 33 cents so the expected value based on this experimental data 33 cents which is exactly what we can before, let me see if I can get out of your way here. It's exactly what we computed before when we were computing on average how much a person should be able to expect to win if they buy lottery tickets over a long period of time. And of course, the probability that I used here, I just made up for the sake of example. Uh, I'm not saying that if we buy lottery tickets that uh, two time or one time out of every 75, uh, what is it? I'm not saying that one time out of every 75 times we buy a lottery ticket, we're going to win. Uh, I just made these up uh, just for the sake of example. But given the information and the data in the example, uh, the expected value of how much we would gain if we buy lottery tickets long term, we expect to gain 33 cents every time we buy a ticket. Now let's look at another example. Yeah, let's look at the example where we had a deck of cards. That looks like a nice example. Yep, this is our old card deck example. Uh, I've never used this one before, but I really like it. I think this is going to turn out to be interesting. We draw a single card from a deck of 52 playing cards. If we draw 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then we get in dollars the numerical amount on the card. So if we draw an 8, for example, we get $8. If we draw a five, we get five dollars, and so forth and so on. If we draw a face card, jack, queen, king, we get ten dollars. 
no, that's not right. If we draw a base card, jack, queen, king, we pay $10. And if we draw an ace, we pay $15. Determine the expected value of the amount gained when playing this game. So if we do this over and over and over and over and over, on average, how much should we expect to gain each time we play the game? Just for future reference, these are how we're going to denote the outcomes. O sub 1, we get an ace. O sub 2, we get a 2. O sub 3, we get a 3. O sub 4, we get a 4, and so forth. O sub 10, we get a 10. O sub 11, we get a jack, or we get a queen, or we get a king. So those are our outcomes. Uh, not all equally likely. Let's do P1. The probability that O1 occurs. The probability that we get an ace. That's going to be the total number of outcomes resulting in an ace. Number of outcomes resulting in an ace over total number of outcomes. The total number of outcomes is 52. There are 52 cards in a deck. The number of outcomes that give an ace, four. So that's 113. Probability of getting a 2. Number of outcomes resulting in a 2. Over total number of outcomes. There are four different ways that we can get a two. We can get king of, I'm sorry, two of clubs, two of diamonds, two of hearts, two of spades. So four ways out of 52. The probability that P2 occurs is 113. And in like fashion, probability of P3 occurring getting a 3, that's going to be 113. P4, probability of getting a 4 will be 113. P5, probability of getting a 5 will be 113, and so on. Okay, probability of getting a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, a 9, a 10. Probability of any one of these happening is 113. And the probability of an ace occurring is 115. This one, the probability of getting a, a jack or a queen or a king Number of outcomes resulting in jack, queen, king, all of that over total number of outcomes. we can read that. Now let's see how, how many different ways or how many outcomes will give us a jack, a 
queen or a king. There are four jacks, four queens, four kings. So that's four plus four plus four. All over 52 total outcomes. So that's nine over 52. And if we divide by four, that's three over 13. So the probability of getting a jack or a queen or a king is three thirteenths. Well, we've got our probabilities. Uh, what about the gains for each of these? The, the amount gained. If we get an ace, we have to pay $15. And we had to pay a dollar to play the game. So the amount gained if we get an ace is negative $16. We lose $16. Okay, probability that we get a 2, and the amount gained if we get a 2. If we get a 2, we win $2, but we have to pay $1 to play the game. So if we get a 2, or a deuce, we gain $1. Suppose we get a three. We win three dollars, but we had to pay a dollar to play, so our gain is two dollars. And let's just fill in the rest of these. We get a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight. Nine, or ten. The amount gained if we get a four, we win four dollars, but we had to pay one dollar to play, so our gain is three dollars. If we pick a five, we win five dollars, but we had to play a dollar to pay. We had to pay a dollar to play. So our gain is four dollars. And if we get a six, we win six dollars minus that one dollar that we had to pay to play, and we get five dollars as our gain. And if we get a seven, we win seven dollars. Minus the one dollar that we had to pay to play, that gives us a six dollar gain. If we get an eight, that gives us a seven dollar gain. And if we have a nine, that gives us an eight dollar gain. And if we had a 10, we win $10 minus that $1 that we had to pay to play. Our gain is $9. Am I missing anything? Yeah. Suppose we get a face card. If we get a face card, we pay $10, so that's negative $10, plus we had to pay a dollar to play, so our gain is negative $11. If we get a face card, our gain is negative $11.
Well, I think we have everything that we need to find the expected value of our winnings. And I hope you wrote all of this down because I'm going to have to erase it. Okay, here we do our expected value formula. The expected value of our gain or the expected gain is probability of getting an ace times the amount gained if we get an ace. The probability of getting a two times the amount gained if we get a two. Probability if we get a three times the amount gained if we get a three, so forth and so on. Probability of getting a ten times the, the amount gained if we get a ten. Probability of getting a face card times the amount gained if we get a face card. Well, let's see. Uh, In each of these terms, we have a denominator of 13. So that means we just have negative 15 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 dot 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 plus 9 minus 10 times 3, that's minus 30. So this is our this is the expected value of the amount that we gain if we play this game over and over again. And uh, something interesting happens here. Uh, we have a negative 15 and a negative 30. So that gives us negative 45 bucks over 13. And let's add up all the positive values. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 6 is 21, plus 7 is 28, plus 8 is 36, plus 9 is 45. We get 0. If we play this game over and over and over again in the long run, we expect to lose nothing and we expect to gain nothing. Uh, this is an interesting game of chance uh, because it's what we call a fair game. Uh, the odds are not in favor of the house and the odds are not in favor of the player. If the expected gain is zero, uh, this is what we call a fair gain. And what that means is anytime the game is played once, the player and the house both have the same probability of winning. And in the long run, the player and the house both have the same probability of winning, which is zero. The expected value of the gains long term for the house, zero. Expected gains for the player long term, zero. Uh, this is what we call an, a fair game, uh, when the expected value of the gains is zero.